Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today, this is a fundamental tutorial talking about object attributes input node and object attributes output node. Before I actually start, I want to firstly kindly warn you that these two nodes, although they contain attributes within their name, but they are not really the same attribute that you use in geometry nodes. So please consider them as totally different things. But on the other hand, these two nodes are also relevant to geometry nodes in a different way that you will think. I may discuss this within this tutorial or in a following tutorial, depends on the length of this particular tutorial. But at least today we are going to have a basic understanding about these two, how these two nodes function, what they can do, and why they are there. So firstly, we need to understand what's the attributes within this um, context. So basically the attributes is any kind of value that you can retrieve from a single object. So for example, we have a location here. And the way you retrieve or you manipulate all these kind of attributes is you right click and it goes to the data pass or you use the shift control C. And you can paste this object's uh, data pass within the first uh, line and then you select this object. So we're selecting a cube 006 whose location is 2.5. So let's hit W and look at its values. We can see there is a vector which is 2.500. And it can also apply to many other parameters. For example, if we take a look with the object the color, so we can copy data path of this, this color. And we can see now it changed its view into the a series of value of 1, 1, 1, 1. What it means is there is RGB, um, there's R, G, B, and finally alpha. So this is how color actually works. As we can see, there is the HSV alpha. And of course, when we have input, we can also output. So if we can actually change all this kind of color, select this object, and it says the value has the wrong type. It's because um, basically this dark red means a generic list. It can receive any kind of input, a vector, a color, or a boolean, or a float. In this case, if we would try to manipulate this color, so let's just say use a color input. And then we can set the type into the red. And then put the red into values. It immediately changes everything into values, while the other objects are still white. However, this nodes. Uh, just to remind you that in the practice, you don't necessarily do this to change all this kind of view, uh, object color. There is a specific node of object color output. Okay, so you don't necessarily copy the data pass, you directly put the colors in, select the object, and doing so on and so forth, right? Uh, and of course, there's also a node which is called object color input. Actually, there's no object color input. Anyway, <laughs> but. Um, so you may ask, okay, what's the point of this object the attribute output node? Is you it's it's made so that you can manipulate all this kind of object data when we don't have a specific node for that. So it's like in this example, so we have object color output, but in many other examples, we don't have the direct manipulation or direct node that address how to show the name, axis, wireframe, or, or edges. But all this kind of data can be manipulated through all these object attributes output. So as we can do this again, like copy data pass, and you just show name. And again, to remind you, people ask me, how can I actually know the data type? It's really intuitive. Like you have, when you have the, all this kind of checkbox, you just use the Boolean input. So this is how it works. So we have the show name, and you can see it's, it shows its names but of course you can actually put multiple objects into it. And now it shows all the name of these cubes. So after this moment, you may still ask, okay, so this is not, this seems to be interesting, but how can this show name being practically useful? So I'm going to show you another example, a more practical example kind of thing. So firstly, briefly discuss this um, node trees. Basically, I'm generating a 3 times 3 grids and I'm instancing the object. 
Basically, you can do this with the same with geometry nodes. But I want to remind you one thing is that I'm generating the actual objects. So they have their names, different transform, or basically they have different names, like cube 005, cube 003, and they can potentially be independent to each other or different from each other. So all these kind of cubes come from the same the same mother cubes, which has, contains a modifier, a bevel modifier and a geometry modifier. Uh, we are going to ignore geometry node modifier for the moment, but I want you to look at the, the bevel modifier. And this modifier has been passed to all these kind of children. And my, what I want to do right now is to have all these kind of different objects have a different bevel amount. And in this case, obviously, if you just uh, search and type bevel, you won't have a bevel modifier controller or other things. And this is the moment that the modifier attached to the object. So we can always access all this kind of information through this object attribute output. So we can just copy data class, paste the values, and immediately it, it does not show any errors, but we probably should not use Boolean. So we need to use a float. So I want to take a, um, let's just take a, so let's take a float input first. And I'm actually can change all this kind of bevel amount. So of course you still, you have other ways without animation nodes, but uh, being able to change all this kind of bevel amounts procedurally easily just with a slider is kind of still very nice. On the other hand, there is a more, uh, there is a better functions that you can use this random number. For example, just use this number. So we are going to use the length from the git list length. So we're generating the same amount of random number and put that to value. Before we put that to values, you need to enable these multiple values. So we can put different values. Yeah. And this is looks, this is the moment which it makes that really looks interesting because it looks like we have different shapes. But if you really think about that, they are actually coming from the same cube as you see earlier. So you can delete this maximum and then you increase the maximum and you can increase the seed. This is completely procedural. And I think it's kind of already very kind of interesting patterns that you can play around. So this is how you can actually work with all these kind of things. Uh, one more thing I would like to remind you uh, is that when we are working with angle, it's a little bit kind of different. So we're going to work with simple deform. So let's just take a simple deform to see how we can, what we can actually see. So if I copy this data path, it still receives a float. So basically every time you, re you see all these kind of single values, it means a float. But if you're trying to use it an array modifier, you have three values, then obviously it's a vector. So this is kind of thing that you have to understand about yourself. It's actually not very difficult to understand. And when we have this slide single value, of course it's still float. And here just to briefly show an example. I'm uh, typing the, 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 so I'm putting the same simple deform actually. You always need to put the modifiers into your mother object, then copy four objects. So update everything again. So now all these kind of children contains a simple deform modifier. And if I increase the value within animation nodes, you can see uh, now I increase the value to two. But within their simple deform, it looks like 115 degree. So there is a conversion in between these two values. This is conversion from radian to degree. If you don't know all these kind of things, please check Wikipedia. But basically, a single pi means 180 degree. Two pi means 360 degree. So this is the thing that you need to work with. Another thing is when you change all this kind of axis, then you need actually a text input. So we copy the data pass. And you can type, uh, you need to capitalize everything. So yeah, basically this is it. Another thing that I've actually discussed in my lighting 
tutorial how to use animation or the control of multiple lights is that each time when you see all this turn off green button it actually means the data uh, block for example if i have this normal and you would like to check uh, tick uh, this checkbox right so you just copy data pass and you paste the data pass you put object into it and it will say attribute not found so here just uh, remember uh, be aware of these kind of two different types of errors one type is the value has a wrong type so you need to actually input the correct type like we do have the floats integer uh, object text inputs color inputs but in this case the error is different it says attribute is not a font so mean which means there is a something wrong within this data pass and uh, i just to tell you the answer directly when you have all these kind of issues you just uh, type in data at the, at the beginning then it shows the value has the wrong type so if you input a correct correct type then you fix everything in this case because we have a checkbox then obviously it's a boolean so you just put a boolean then you shade smooth all these kind of children objects okay so these are just examples about how to use them but i hope it's kind of helpful so since we're talking about the how object attributes outputs manipulating modifier you must be aware that the geometry nodes are also a modifier it does not directly manipulate the geometry within sides but it can do something interesting so here's we have a geometry node so let's because i'm deleting all this kind of values so let's just re-update and it will say it's key not found so let's just delete all these kind of nodes since we're not using them okay so here within geometry node this is actually kind of very simple setup i'm just uh, generating a random vector values which is called r and i'm over i'm adding these random values to the positions and override the position it's kind of very simple if you're in 2.93, then it will be one node less that you can directly type positions inside and so on and so forth. But uh, I'm in 2.92 right now. It does not actually really matter. And let's just add a, sim add a subject division surfaces so that I'm randomize all these kind of cubes. If I turn on this maximum, then all these kind of um, cubes or sphere has been randomized their vertices okay and they just flies away and they, there's no variation they're exactly the same you can change the random seed but they're still the same because they come all comes from the same objects so if you or and they are used they are sharing 100 percent the same trees so if you change the seed for when it change the seed for all the rest children as well okay so there's nothing interesting if you're really just uh, randomizing the vertices or beveling inside, I don't know what you are trying to do. But in this case, you want you may want to have a different seed for different objects, while you are not able to do that within geometry nodes. So even if you're in 2.93, this feature hasn't been implemented yet. But actually, of course, there's a kind of workaround. So you put a seed into the group input, so now these kind of seeds are independent for each object so you can manually change all these kind of values and here i want you to understand that it's it's good if you only have one or two objects to manipulate and i have nine objects to manipulate different seeds but what if i have 1000 objects 100 objects then i'm not able to change this one by one and another severe case is if i'm just instancing more objects then i just have more objects to duplicate or manipulate this is just not productive if you don't do this procedurally so this is also a moment this is really a moment that we can use the all this object attribute output to manipulate all this kind of seed so what we do is just the right click copy data pass and we paste this data pass put the object in 
and immediately you can see the seed this object has been uniformed because we didn't input any values in yet actually it says the property type does not match whatever whatever so in this case what you need to do is just put an integer input because the seed obviously is integer as we can see one two three four five it's just a very straightforward and now i'm just using a single integer to manipulate all this kind of data and obviously if i will we would like to randomize the things then you just uh, enable these random values and then we can use this random number but we need to transform all these kind of float values into the integer there is billions ways but there is also issues about the vectorization uh, which basically means that these plural numbers cannot go directly into these single values so it actually cause errors and many other things in this case i would just tell you the easiest method that i commonly use is i create an integer list actually combine the integer list so just this one node and I put the numbers into list and output this list then immediately we are having different uh, seed for different objects you just increase this maximum number then generating really different randomization of this kind of dummy objects and you can change the seeds it's really completely procedural you can easily manipulate everything and you can also change all these kind of values you can instance as many as you want and all of them will procedurally have a different seeds and again you can change the seed so completely procedural easy straightforward uh, and it works in 2.92 so surely it will work in 2.93 there's only one box that you can if you plug uh, any other value type into the, like the max like the vector attributes it probably won't really work in this case i think this is more of an issue within geometry node in itself i'm not sure when it will be fixed but uh, just working with seed right now is already very very good so this is it so there are obviously more things that you can potentially do previously people actually just uh, um earlier that people asked me about a curve modifier if you're using curve modifier obviously you can just uh, get a object input into the sockets so on so forth actually there are lots of ways to play you around with that i may sh i may or may not show the example in the future but i think this tutorial will end here so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'll probably see you next time bye bye